Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and thanks for joining us on the Email Manager Part 4, which is our final. And in this particular episode, we are going to cover a ton of new features, including a single click header feature with its ascending or descending on a table. We have the ability to select a specific email contact and display those emails in a dynamic pop-up picture. We also have the ability to see attachments as they have been added in specific emails from our contacts. We also have the ability to search a specific contact just by typing in. It'll go directly to that. We also have added a pop-up slide out, slide in file type where we can easily select specific file types simply by selecting and then sliding it back up. We've got a lot to cover, even more, which I'm going to be bringing you. Let's get started. All right, welcome back. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a whole lot to cover. If you haven't quite seen parts one, two, or three, go ahead and check those back. I'll include the links in the description below because we're going to continue right on from where we left off on part three. We've got a lot to cover. I wasn't even sure if we were going to make a part four, but in fact, I crammed so many new features into this. Let's go ahead and go over those new features and what we're going to be covering. We've got to save attachments as file types, slide out, a slide out here. We can slide out and select specific attachments if we want to include those within our Excel or not. If we want to exclude them, for example, we don't want to save any pictures, we'll just unselect pictures and then no pictures are going to be brought in from email. So that's a great feature there. We've added a brand new contact sheet with name, email, category, and notes. And in this particular contact, we can select any specific contact. We can display and we can change their category just like that. That'll change it from moving forward for all new emails that come in. We can add notes to that as well. And it's going to update the database. We have also added a single click sort ascending or descending for any specific category. And this is a great new feature. In fact, if you like this feature, you are going to love the advanced Excel dashboards masterclass. We have that same feature and a whole lot more in that masterclass. Let me go ahead and show that to you if you haven't seen it. This is the reports and graphs. It is an unbelievable masterclass, 15 plus hours where I teach you how to save specific on Excel PDF picture and custom reports. We have the ability to email quickly at Excel PDF picture and attachments. We also have automatic filtering. We've got sales by month graphs and charts here. We have a drop down date range. So hopefully you get to see that where you can select any specific date range or of course a custom date range, which you can create. We've also got a profit and loss. If you haven't seen this, this is a drill down, drill up. So we've got a great, we've got outstanding invoices where we can specifically, we have a dynamic picture of outstanding invoice. So I'm going to show you how to create that dynamic picture here using the outstanding invoices. Profit and loss is an amazing, let's go ahead and select a date so I can show you just how we generate a profit and loss. We have drill down and drill up capability. So hopefully you'll get to that and hopefully you will take this uh, amazing masterclass. So do get a chance if you get a chance to have a look at it. I'll include the description below. All right, glad we covered that. And moving forward on our email contacts, there's a lot more to show you. In fact, in this final, so we've added the ability to add those email contacts here and we've set the default categories. Moving on, we have also set up, we have a dynamic browse workbook location in the Outlook so that we can use any workbook location. So we'll show you how that works. And of course, we have a dynamic picture pop up in the emails. So that means whenever we select a specific email, that entire email is going to show here, assuming it's been uh, categorized here. We have the entire email so we can see it in an email form, which is really going to be helpful so that we can see that. And I'll show you how to create this amazing pop up picture and, of course, how to close that on a click. So we've got so much to cover. We're probably going to go well over our normal time today. So grab a coffee, get uh, ready, and let's get started. All right. Our first feature, we've got a brand new contact sheet, as you can see here. 
and I've designed it here. And basically what this is, is just a very simple table. And each time a brand new contact is added through Outlook, it gets added onto this. And so it doesn't duplicate. So it's first checked if there is a contact. And basically simply how this works is if we take an email, let's go ahead and go back into our Outlook and inbox and let's just uh, delete a specific contact because I've already got them in Excel. So let's just say we delete this contact here and then we bring him in again through Outlook through one of those emails. So if we were to have, let's say here, John Randall here and we bring it over to the test and then I'm going to bring it back into the inbox and automatically it's going to get added down here into the email context. And when we select it, we're going to see all the emails. In fact, this email is, this is just the same email three times, but normally you'll have multiple emails. So as emails get created, you can see a list of all the emails for this specific contact. So it's really great. And normally we'll have different emails. And the same thing if there's attachments, if there's attachments, you're going to see those attachments here. And I'm going to show you how to create this dynamic table. This is a dynamic table and we use conditional formatting. So it's an amazing seal. Notice how the top of this table is automatically dynamic based on the location. So that way, as far as you scroll down, if you have a contact here, it's going to select and it's always going to show up to the right no matter what row you are on. So that's probably a feature you may not have seen. In fact, it's something that I have not taught. So I'm super excited to teach that. It's a lot of conditional formatting, but it, the VBA is quite simple. So I'm really excited to show you that relatively simple, but very powerful feature. So we're going to call that dynamic table location. So the location of that table is dynamic and we just use conditional formatting. And basically, so when we delete all the data, you'll see that the table disappears automatically. So all of that data is based all of those colors are based on conditional formats, conditional formats. So it's really powerful to get a nice looking table in all the colors. And of course, we have a little bracket here. That's just a little shape that we've dynamically placed on the current row. And what do we track the current row? Well, first of all, you've seen this selection change. The first thing we do is we have a selection change. So I want to show you that. And But before we get into the Excel, let's just go over a few of the Outlook changes, and then we can move back into Excel and focus just on Excel. So let's go over the code in Outlook. And remember, I'm going to include a copy of all of this Outlook code in a Word document so that if you don't have it, you can copy and paste that over. And of course, to get to our Outlook VBA, what we need to do is we need to look at the developers tab if you do not have the developers tab available here in your outlook you can easily get it by clicking on the file options and then of course going to the customize ribbon feature and then just selecting that down here so the developers tab we we'll want to make sure that's selected and that's going to provide our developers once we're into the developers tab we'll just click on visual basic if you want a shortcut there alt F11 will get you that shortcut. You won't even need to see the developers tab to get to Alt 11. And here is our code so far. And I've added, made it a little additions to that. We don't need this template, but I'm going to keep this one set inbox item. This one that's been commented is used for the default inbox. If you want to use your default inbox, you can use it there. However, if you want to use specific boxes, specific folders, then what you need to do is just you need to use this type of formatting. We went over this last time. So the main folder is Outlook New. And if you look in my Outlook, Outlook New is the main one here. And then once we want to, we want to go to the inbox. So if we wanted to change it to drafts or something within the outlook, all you would have to do is change it to just change this to drafts. So make sure you make these changes when you get it. Make sure you put yours is not going to be called Outlook New. I don't know what yours is going to be called. Maybe just Outlook or something else. Make sure you change it here and then the folders. And if you want to drill even further down into your folder structure, just copy and paste that here and paste it here. And so you can start drilling down, drilling down just like that. But make sure it ends in items. All right. So that's how we cover any specific folder. We did go over the last time, but there was a few questions concerning that. So so I wanted to cover it again. All right, we've added a few different things and there's been some code changes. Basically, if the workbook is open or if it's not active, we want to active. So I've made a few small changes and I have also added the ability to make the workbook location dynamic. So what we did is there's a file path. We've dimensioned the file path and if it doesn't exist, file path is our long file path and I've dimensioned it up here as a public all the way up here so that it's constant every time we run this code it's constant but if it doesn't exist 
then it's going to tell you, hey, something's wrong. So let's go ahead and into my folder and change that. And right now our, our, our located is, our application is located here under options. Oh, excuse me, right here. Here's the location of that. So if I copy that location and I'm going to close this. So we're going to change the name and see what happens. I'm going to save it, close it, and see what happens when we actually do make a change to that because yours will not be the same, of course. So when you get yours in, your folder and file structure is going to be very different. So let's go ahead and paste that right here, and we can see that. We can open it up. Actually, we don't want to open it up, so let's paste it right here, and then let's just do just the folder location, which is all I want to see, which is here. In fact, I open it up. Let's close that by drilling down. By drilling down automatically, we've opened it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and just change this name. And then this way, it's not found in Outlook. In Outlook, it's not going to be found. So let's see what happens when it's not found. Going into back into Outlook, let's create this macro and run this. If we run this here, and then we go ahead and continue on into our, there's going to be an issue. And that's fine. We want it, We want that issue to create it. So back into drafts. And let's just drag something back into the back into the test folder and then back into the inbox right here. Okay, so now we've got now this browse came up. It says it couldn't find the, what it was looking for. It couldn't find it. But where is it, right? So we just need to browse for it to, to look at it. And of course, mine's located here in. Uh, let's go ahead and paste that again. Paste that. Because we know where it's located in email, email manager four. So what we do is we just need to find it, locate it, and click OK. All right. So how did we do that? How do we browse for a folder if there's an issue with what it's looking for? It's going to locate. It's going to find it. So how did we do that? Let's go back into the Outlook code and take a look and see just how that was done. All right. Here's the code. So what we're doing is we're going to look for the directory path. What I'm going to say is if there's some problem with the directory path, the right, if it doesn't equal Equal XLSM. In other words, you're just running a test, and if it's if the current path is not found, if there's a problem with it, then we're going to set the create to Excel applications and then visible, right? If it does not equal, then we're going to set the file dialog. Basically, what I want to do is I want to browse and to set the file dialog to create a file dialog, which is what you saw that open up and looking for the file. We do it this way. First, we set the Excel application that's been set as a browser so that we can create an Excel application. Another one. This is different. And the Excel application, make sure it's visible equals false. We don't need to see that. And we're going to set a file dialog based on the Excel application. Pull it up. We don't need a title on this. We can get rid of that because it's just going to be a simple one. And then we're going to dimension the selected items variant and the file dialog. If it's negative one, we're going to set the file path to whatever the user select to whatever the user selects. So this file path is going to be our file path moving forward. If for some reason the user doesn't select it, if they close out, if the file path still equals zero at that point or equals an empty string, then we want to exit the sub, right? We don't want to continue on if the user has not selected anything. That'll just go ahead. But assuming the user has selected, we can then move forward. It'll be this file path moving forward all the time. All right, next up. So we've determined that there's no error. Now we continue on with the rest of the code that we did go over last time. In fact, determining if the file's open and continuing down. Now there's a little bit more code that we've added in here. Now I've created a file name. I want the file name. And that's the directory of the file path. So when we run directory of that file path, it's going to pull that file name. In fact, if not the Excel, let's pull this. We can, it does not equal file name. We can change that. Then the workbook equals false. So that's going to tell us if the, now we have a dynamic file name, dynamic file name. So that's very, very important. So now we know if the workbook's open or not, we can test on using this dynamic name. So that means no matter what your workbook name is, it's going to work this way. Before we had a kind of a constant where it had to be a specific name. Now we can change it to whatever we want. We can change the location to whatever we want, and it's going to work moving forward. And I'll, there might be a few small bugs. I'm going to test this out before sending it to you. I'll, I'll run it through more, even more tests to make sure that there's no bugs. And I'll change the location. I'll change the name a few times. So even at this point, there may be a few, but I'll double check that. All right. So continuing on, we did go over this. this is for the attachments folder. 
And now what we want to do is I want to assign a default category. So here this code is new. This code is new. And so basically let's just go over what, what we're trying to do here. We're adding a new customers, right? Maybe they're new, maybe they're not. So what I want to say is, okay, if the customer is new, if it's a new contact we've never added before, I want to put in the default category. What is the default category? It's whatever we selected here. In fact, this looks, I'm going to add some spaces and then I'm going to put a space in this because I don't want that to bleed over into there. There we go. Now we're good. So the idea is this specific selection will allow us to set a specific default category for new contacts. As you add it, nothing's going to happen here, but as you add some text, then you're going to be able to select it. So I put a rule in and I'll show you how we did that, of course, in VBA. But what it's going to do is it's going to look and set a default category. So if you want your default category is business, we can check it here. And now one more part of this, we're going to also put that default category right here into B2. And that default category is based on a formula. Well, what is that formula? Well, the formula is index. We're going to index category. Why are we indexing category? Category is the named range that we have set. It's the dynamic named range here. So when we look into formulas, we go into name manager, we take a look at category. I'll bring this up for you can see it. Now we've got category. We're using offset, offset to find it. And that means as this grows, so does our named range. We use offset. We've used this many times in the past before. We're going to start at R3. Why are we starting at R3? We're starting at R3 in case there's no data, there won't be any error. So we're going to start at R3, which is the header row, but we're going to start one row down from R3, starting at one row down. If we were going to keep this blank, you'll see that automatically it's going to go one row up, right? We don't want that. You'll see that it would start at names. So adding a one here moves it down one. So when we highlight it, that, it's perfect. Next up, we're going to count all the text. I want to count the text starting in the header row. That prevents issues. And then, of course, subtracting one. We don't want to include the header row. So we're going to count everything, including the header row, and then subtracting one. So that way, all of the data is contained and there's no errors if there is no data. Okay, so that's the category. So now we don't need to save changes. So now what we says, okay, we're going to index the category, but we're going to first match. What is this U with the two dots over it? That is our checkbox in the wing dings font. So we're looking for that icon. We're looking for that icon here, right here, here. So that is the icon. You'll see this is the, this is the character character, I should say, in the wing dings font. That font's been wing dings. So when you drop it down and you'll go into home, you'll see that's the wing dings font. But in actuality, it is that U with the two dots over it. So that's going to help us out. That's going to, so we're going to search for that within that specific range. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to search that specific character all the way from S4 to S4. 45. We're going to search that range here and we're going to locate it. Once it's located, we want an exact match. That's why we use zero in the match. We're going to find that row. We're going to use index, we're going to determine what category that is. And of course, we're going to use that first column on the index. And that's going to get us our category. That is going to return our category. So as we select a specific, a different default, automatically it's going to change here into B2. So our default category is going to be B2. That is the category that I want to use for any new contact. But what if the contact is existing? What if it's an existing contact and we've already selected them as business? In that case, what I want to do is when I add the email to our database, I want to add it using a specific formula, right? What I want to do is I want to use index. I want to index that contact category. I want to find that customer contact category and I want to match B23. In this case, what is B23? From the email, right? I'm going to use index match one more time. I want to index the content contact category and match it. Locating the row is going to be a match based on the email. So if we take a look in the contacts, let's take a look at the named ranges that we have created. Into the formulas and the name manager, 
We've got three different named ranges. One is called contact category. They really should all have be contacts. Okay, so contact category is our category here in a dynamic named range. We have our contacts email, also a dynamic, and of course we have our contacts name. So we've got we've covered those three, and I like to have three separate ones so that we clearly know what we're indexing, as opposed to using the entire table and then setting a specific column. I like to have three separate indexes so that we know exactly what we're going to be indexing. So of course in the email database, we're going to be looking up our contact category and we're going to determine the row of that based on the email right here so we use a formula and this is for existing so back into our outlook code we've done it again so we're going to determine is this an existing contact if it is an existing contact use a specific formula if it's not else then what we're going to do is set the default use the default where's the default the default is located in our workbook in our sheets contact in range b2 i just showed you where that was b2 so that is going to be but how do we determine if it's an existing contact or not well the first thing we need to do is set a couple of ranges one is the contact range so i've dimensioned all the way up here two new ranges the contact ranges that is going to range of our contact email addresses and then of course when we look for it we want to set a found range so we know whether it's found or not so we're going to set a found range so we have those two brand new ranges that we're going to add and we're going to show you how that we use them the first thing we want to do is we want to set the contact range so if we down here we're going to set that contact range and what is it based on based on our workbook based on the sheets contacts and based on that contacts email that's the named range i just showed you so that is the first thing we want to set the contact range based on our current range of contact emails next thing we want to do is we want to look for it we want to look for what are we looking for well first of all we're going to set our found this is the range whether it's going to be found or not is going to be inside this range we're going to look in where we're going to look in our contact range we're going to find something in this range what are we going to find we're looking for the sender email address sender email address and if you look here at the parameters here under that if we if we get rid of this comma and click come again we'll see that we're going to look in we're going to leave look after so we're going to look after the first point we're going to look in the values and we're going to look at the whole those are the required items the values and looking at the whole values so that is we're going to look at now We've looked it up, but now we need to run a test. So we can continue on with the rest of our macro, and we can run our test right here. We can run that test. If not found contact is nothing, remember these two negatives, nothing and not, they cancel each other out. So that means if it is found, if it is found, if it's a contact found, then we should look it up and find out whatever category has been assigned to that contact using this formula i just showed you that formula this is the formula that we are going to put inside the specific cell so and remember remember we have a double quotes if we look in this formula let's take a look in the formula right here and you'll see that this formula ends with double quotes but we can't put double quotes in VBA. And so what do we do? So we use the character equivalent. So we have double quotes and we use the character equivalent in VBA. So let's see how we did that in our Outlook code. We used character 34. Let's scroll over there. We use character 34 and character 34 because we can't use quotes because quotation marks are used within the code. So we can't use those because they have another purpose. So we'll use character 34 and character 34. That is how we do a double quotes inside a formula from VBA. And of course, we're going to end it up with the end of parentheses. All right. So that's how we put in that formula and that is how we pull it. Else else what else if it is not found if it's not found this is if it's found this is if it's not found then of course we're going to do the default category all right so that is how everything else in this code is relatively the same we haven't done anything else haven't modified the code uh in the other way i've just created the dynamic file name here so that's all we have so that's basically the changes that we made within the outlook and uh, so we just have the two things the one we went over the file path where we browse for the file path here using the file dialog here so that we can pull up the specific file if it's not found this is our test so if it's not found it's going to ask you the user to browse for the specific location 
of the Excel email manager, wherever you have stored it. All right, so that is the truth. That is how we move on. And let's go on back into Excel because we've got much more to cover. So we just went over how to get the category, whether it is a default category or whether we're going to look it up and use that. All right, so now we've covered now we've covered that. We've covered the default. And now let's see. Now we got another feature where we select. And we've been over this type of thing for a few times now. So basically, we on selection change, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the row right here in B3. B3 is where a row is going to do that. And into our developers, VBA, we can see how we do that into the contact sheet. We've got a few different things on selection change, selection change. So the first thing I, I didn't show you this, that's the check mark. We've been over that a few times, but let's go over that real quick. S Four through S45. Remember that default checkbox. What I want to do is I want to. I don't want to select multiple. I don't want to select multiple. I only want to select one. So, how do we do that? When we want to select just one, what we want to do is we don't want the user to select multiple, just one, right? Not giving them the ability. So basically, what I want to do is I want to clear everything here out, determine whatever row the user selected, and then just put the checkbox there. So that is how we do that inside the code as well, right here. So we determine the selected row is the target row. We clear out the entire range for any other check marks, and then we just put the check mark into you. Now, if you cannot use this character, if you're trying to copy and paste and it's not working, then what you want to do is you want to double check your font to paste. So what we'll do is we're going to go into the tools, options, and in the editor format, make sure you have the Arial Western, Arial Western. Sometimes when you paste in a specific font, it just has a question mark there. So you want Arial Western. And that's going to be able to give you the ability to paste these specific fonts inside directly into your code. And that's where we're going we're to put that checkbox there. So in case you have that issue, that's how you solve it. All right, so on selection of contacts, load the contact. That's what we're going to focus on now. If the user makes a selection, just a selection, anywhere between D8 and G999, that's one specific option. And the other requirement is that D must have a value in it. Why is that? Let's go in into that and move over and we'll see. D is where our name is located, right? So we when we select something that doesn't have any value in D, we don't really want anything to happen. There's nothing to load. But when we select something with an actual value in D, an actual name, we do want them to load. We want to do is I want to put this information, the name here in E3. I want to put the category in G3. And of course, the email into E4 and the notes. And the way we have it here is we just, if we make a change to either the category or the notes, then it changes below. But there's no such, we don't want to change the name and we don't want to change the email because that just doesn't really make sense. It's based on Outlook. So that's the information we want to go. All right. Let's go ahead and continue on with our code. So if they close this out, we don't need that code. So if they continue on so what we're going to do is we're going to take the email i want to first if there's a picture group we'll go over this in a moment but if this picture is displayed that is the email picture that i'm going to show you that's this email this picture here if that's displayed and we select another uh, another contact i want that picture to, to disappear so we want to remove that picture or at least hide it and we do that in the code with just a simple line shapes email picture that's the name that i've given that picture visible equals false and i'm going to show you how to display that real soon so stay tuned for that and of course b3 i want that row i want the row we use that for conditional formatting and a few other features and then b6 clearing out what is b6 well b6 is our specific email row email row selected email so if you've selected an email row i want to know which row you selected as well so to do that we want to know we want to know the row but when we've selected another one we want to get rid of that row as well so b6 is our email row and we want that disappearing for now until the user actually selects on a specific email to display that email so i want to clear that out as well all right moving on the next thing i want to run the macro called load contact or contact load that's going to load it that's going to put all that information put the details from this row inside this small little, little form here so how do we do that it's a very very simple macro let's go ahead and into that and remember one thing if there's a contact load i want to run this when there's changes made to business if there's a change made here like for example i want to change this to spam i also want to change it down here if they if they make a note if they change the notes test 
I want to make that change here. But when we select a specific row, there's also a change, right? There's also a change here because we're loading it. So there's two different kinds of changes. I need to differentiate between those two types of changes. One change, we're not going to save back to the table. When we load it, we're making a change to the cells above, but that type of change, we are not going to make a change to the table. But this type of change is the type of change that I do want to save down to the table here. That is important. So let's go ahead and show you how we did that into that macro. So we continue on until we have a context load here. We've got a new module called context load. And once again, to change the name of any module, you just look the properties up here and we can change the name right here. All right. Continuing on, we have a context load. So with sheet four, the first thing we want to do is check if B3 is empty, meaning there is no specific row, then we need to exit the sub. That is critical. We need to know a specific row here. If it's empty like it is now, then there's nothing else we can do. But when it's when we've selected it, it's always going to show the row because we need to pull the information from this row and put it in this form. So of course, we need to make sure that we're actually adding it there. All right. So continue Continuing on, we have to now load it up. So now that we've got B3, we've checked to make sure that it's not empty. We're going to stop the calculations. And if you'll remember, all we're doing with that road is we're going to enable events, which is false. We're going to turn calculation to manual and screen updating it false. The reason we do this is for speed purposes so that our macro runs a lot quicker. We just have to remember before the macro ends to run the reset calculation, which turns everything back on. All right, so back into the context load. Before, we're going to set the contract load to true. We're going to do this so that we don't and change we don't save changes back to the table below. And then, of course, right before the macro ends, we're going to change before back to false. So that's good. All we really need to do in this macro is we just need to take the data from the table and put it into the individual cells above. E4 was going to be email. E3 will be contact name. G3 will be category. And E5 will be notes. That's pretty much it. The next thing I want to do is I want to run two different macros. One is the email load and one is the attachment load. So let's go ahead and go over this. So what is contact email load and what is contact attachment load? Well, those are the two specific macros that allow us to run this data. For example, if there's no attachments, this is what you're going to see. Just a table here. But now if there is attachments, I believe the one from me is an attachment here. There are attachments on this specific that I also want to run this data here. And this will probably be hidden. We'll make this a light blue. But I, this will come in handy if we want to show if we want to show specific previews of the attachment we can have that's going to be really handy. We want to open it up in the future. So you may want to have that full file name here if you don't want it. It's easy to remove. All right, so we've got two different macros, one that's going to run the emails, show display the emails in these columns, and the next one, if there's any attachments, we're going to show them here. So those two macros, let's go ahead and go over and see how we do those. But before, let's take you through what the, we're actually doing on the sheets. So in the email database, what I'm going to do is basically I want to know this specific email address. And I'm going to take this email address and whatever our selected row is, and I'm going to put it into an advanced filter. I'm going to put it right here, the from email. This is our database of emails. So our advanced filter is going to be from email. And then what I want to know is I want to know all of the results, and I'm going to put them here into this area right here. So in this case, the email, email from from me here was just returned two results. So I want to put those results right here. And it's going to tell us the number of attachments. And so we'll put it, the data right here. And then I'm going to bring that data right back and place it right in here. So that's all we're going to be doing. We're going to run advanced filter using the email, taking the data and putting it right here. And then I'm going to take this header data. I'm going to put it. So if we have a selected row here, I want to take the header data and put it two rows above. What is the header data? Let's take a look. The header data is just a simple text and it's right here, right here, right here. These four columns and three rows, excuse me, two rows here, two rows right here. So this range I've named receive email header, this REC email header. I've named this range so that we can use that in the code. This header has a name. All it is, all it is is just the text, received emails, received on emails. So it's this information. All I'm going to do is copy this. Now let's take a look here. If we do that using the conditional formatting, let's go ahead and delete this. 
And now let's copy that details, information here, copy that, and then we're going to paste it anywhere. Just paste it anywhere, make sure on I, anywhere in I. Paste the values. All I'm going to do is paste the values. And you see, other than the, the center over, which is taken care of in the VBA, automatically our conditional formatting is applied, automatically. So we use conditional formatting, and then of course the VBA, the VBA will take care of one additional thing, which is the center across selection. How do we do that? Format the cells. I like using that over merge cells, because then you got to unmerge them. It's less code. Alignment, center across selection, and then click OK. So our VBA is going to do that, and that's all it is. So that's how we get the header, and then all we need to do, and of course in VBA, is bring our data, copy this, bring it over into the email manager, into the contacts here, right click, paste the values, and you'll see automatically, in fact, we'll, we'll go ahead and center this, and of course we take care of the centering, and then if this gets left justified, that's all done in VBA. That is how we do that, and we select it. Let's close it out. So that's how we get our data in the table. You see, automatically, all I did was paste the values. I didn't paste any formats. Our formats are 100% done in conditional format to get these beautiful tables. So I'll show you how we do that. All right, so now you kind of see how we're going to do it, but let's go through the VBA process and see how it's done through VBA. And we can just delete this data because all we're doing is deleting the data. And as we select a specific row, automatically our information is going to be displayed. So it's a really, really great feature and it's a great way. So there's so many tricks in here. Now you don't need to use them for this email, but I am sure you're going to find an amazing purpose to use these tricks tips and techniques. So let's go ahead and continue into the VBA where we're going to focus on our contact email load. That's the one. That's this macro right here. And it's basically just what I walked you through that. So for the first, we need the last email row, right? We're going to be running an advanced filter. So we need to know the last row, just the last row of our email database. If we're going to run an advanced filter, I need to know the last row. In this case, it's 23. So we're going to have to dimension that. And of course, we're going to dimension a few other variables where the last email results row, I need to know once we run that advanced filter, we're going to get some results. So we need to know the last row of the results. So we're going to need to dim dimension that as long as well. Sheet two, I do want to clear any previous criteria and results on our email database. What is that? We've been over this type a few times. And basically all I'm going to do is take this criteria, take it all starting here, and just running it all and just deleting it. I just want to delete it so that all of the criteria, all the results are gone because we're going to run a brand new fresh advanced filter. We want to remove criteria, remove results that might be there from previous advanced filters. All right, so we've done that with just this line of code. The next up, we want to place the email, that email back into and why we have to mention this but where is this this is a constant here this is automatically up here so because we've defined it in this macro right here that the right here we can keep that same variable in this macro because we've defined it it's based on the entire module not on a specific macro. That's why we don't need to define it again. That's why we can use it right here. E in the contact row. That is our email. And I want to place that email AC3. Let's go over that again. It's going to be placed right here in AC3. AC3. But where are we going to get it from? We're going to get it from E, call them E, and the contact row. So whatever the contact row is, in this case it's 12, we're going to place that value right into the email. So now right here. So we see it's just placed right here, AC3. So that's what we do with that. Next up, we need to get the last email row, just as we described, and we'll use that, the A99. That's going to get us our last row of, of our emails so that we're ready to run our advanced filter. We're going to start out sheet two emails. We're going to include that header row, A2 all the way to H is the last column in our last email row. We're going to run the advanced filter. We've been over this so many times. Uh, filtering copy range. What is the criteria range? It's just the one cell, AC2 through AC3. That's the email address, right? That's the header and the email address, just those. That's all we, that's the only criteria that we're gonna be focused on, no other criteria in this case. I'm gonna copy that data range to all the way to AX2 through BA2. We're just gonna copy all that data to that specific range, and that is the header rows. AX2 here, all the way to BA. So that's where, we, that's where the details go. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna determine the last row. In this case, it's six. If, 
if the last row is less than three, that means there are no results. So we need to check to make sure the last row is greater than three. Then if it is, we need to get the last row of six. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this detail, I'm gonna copy it over, and I'm gonna bring it right into the context and put it right here. First, of course, we're gonna run the range. So let's do that, continue on with the code. We're continuing on. Now that we've run our advanced filter, we're gonna determine the last row, the last row of our results. Sheet two, AX, 99, and uh, that's our last row. And of course, we need to run that check, just what I told you, if it's less than three, then go to no email data, which is gonna go all the way down here. Because if there's no email data, we don't need to continue, although almost always there's going to be email data, just in case. And then with sheet four, now we're primarily focused on sheet four, so we're gonna with sheet four. Now we can get ready, and that is our contact sheet, sheet four contacts. So the first thing we want to do is we want to clear any previous e emails and attachments. And that's in this range here, I6 through Q999. So I want to clear that entire range. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to start up in I, I6 here. I6 here, and then all the way over to Q, and just gonna clear out, I wanna clear, I'm gonna delete clear that whole range, right? Just in case so we wanna clear it out, that's the first thing, just to make sure we've cleared out all emails and all attachments if there was any. So we do that with that line of code. Next up, I wanna place the received header. Remember, I named that header, remember? That named header is receive email header. Where are we gonna place it? I'm gonna place it in I, and the contact row minus two through L in the contact row minus one. Why is that? Well, when we select a row, we know our contact row is here in 12, right? So, I, but I wanna start, I wanna start the emails right here. I wanna start them right here in the same row. So I wanna place the header row right above it. The first, the main header row is gonna go two above. The second one's gonna go one above. So minus two, minus one. So that's the reason, that's the reason we've put that there. So we've got two rows above. So if we select it, it's always going to be two rows above. Always going to be two rows above. That's where we're going to place the header so that our email data is placed on the same row. So we just need to put that there. So that's why we use minus two for the top and then minus one. And that's going to bring us our dynamic location for the header. The colors are all taken care of by conditional formatting. All right, next up, again, remember I said I want to use center across selection, that header row. When we bring it over, it wasn't automatically centered, right? One line of code will do that. I in the contact row minus two through L in the contact, we're gonna center across selection all of the values, including the one below, and we're gonna center across selection. That's how we do that, that's how we get it centered. All right, next up, we're I in the contact row all the way through L in the last and three minus three contact row, what is this line of code? We're gonna take the data starting at I in the contact row through L in the last email results row minus three plus contact row. Why do we do, why do we have minus three plus contact row? Well, basically we have a difference of rows. If you look at this row, this row is gonna start on row 11, which is the contact row, but our results, our results start are always going to start on row three, row three. So we need to subtract first. We want to subtract three to get to zero. And then what I want to do is I want to place the data in the current row, whatever the current row is. So that's important. So that our data will always start here. So to do that, we want a minus three plus the contact row, plus the contact row in the last email results row. That's the last row, right? The last row. So that's why we do that to place the data correctly. It's going to start in the contact row. It's going to go all the way to the last email row. This is our last results row, minus three plus the contact row. So these two things will get us the appropriate last row. So in this case, that last row is right here. It's 12. So we just have two rows. So it's starting at 11 and ending at 12. That's how we get that specific row. And we can see the email there. All right. So continuing on, we have done that. Now what we want to do is... I, I don't want to wrap the text. Those emails can be quite long. We want to make sure that we're not wrapping the text. Otherwise, the row height will be way too large. So we do not want to wrap it. We do not want to wrap that text. That prevents it. Next up, what I want to do is I want to set the horizontal alignment of I to the center. What's that going to do? The center. These are the dates. I want to center those dates. I want to center these and I want to make these left, left, right? Because I don't want to center this and I want to make this left and then center this. 
which it should already be. So we do that just to format those. So I, of course, is going to be to the center. J through K, J through K, right, is the email message, email subject, email message are going to be to the left, horizontal alignment left. That's going to help us. And this, we don't need, we don't need this. We don't need to center the last one. I think it's fine. It's always going to be centered. Next, the email brace. What is the email brace? That's a picture that I have that kind of showed you this picture right here. I've named that picture. And of course, this picture is simply just the brace here. When we click shapes and we look for a brace here, we can find it right here. That's the right brace. So that's the one we're using here, right brace. Maybe it's a yeah, right brace here. That's the shape that I've used, and I've given it a name just by clicking here and giving it name. What I want to do is I want to place that in the selected row. We know the row is our contact row, and I want to place it right here into H, column H, and whatever row that we have. That way that brace moves no matter what row we have selected. So we can do that with just this little bit of code right here with the shape's brace. So with that, what the first thing I want to do is I want to make it visible. Second thing I want to do is I want to place it in column H in the contact row left and column H in the contact row top. So that's going to position that brace exactly on in column H and in the row contact row, which is variable. That's it. That is all we do to get the emails to display the emails. The next is the attachment load. How do we get those attachments? Well, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to, we're going to basically do the same thing, almost exactly the same thing that we did uh, in the emails. Now we're going to do it through attachments. So for example, I have attachments here in this email. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that email, and this time it's going to be through the attachments email, the attachments database. We're going to place the email address right here, the email address in M3, and I'm going to run an advanced filter. I'm going to look at all this data. We're going to get the last row of the attachments. In this case, it's four. We're going to run an advanced filter. And whoever's emails are these, in case there's just two in this case, we're going to run the results right here. And I'm going to take these results, and I'm going to place them right here. But before I place those, I'm going to take a header row, and I'm going to place that here. So for example, if we delete this information, and I have a new header, I have this right here. This is our header row, attachment header, attachment header, which is the two rows and three columns. I've given it a named range. So when I copy that through VBA, copy that, and I paste that right into here into column N and then paste the values, you'll see automatically, other than the centered, it's going to conditionally format automatically. So that's what we're going to do. First, we're going to do that. And then, of course, I'm going to take the, the data. I'm going to copy this data and I'm going to put that right here. I'm going to put it right on the below. I'm going to paste those values right here. So we're going to do just that. And then, of course, I'm going to left justify that here in the code. And uh, this, everything else is fine. So that's all we're going to be doing. And of course, I'm going to center across selection. So when we highlight this and we go to this, and we click alignment, and then we click center across selection, it's going to do just that, center everything. So that's what we're going to do in the code. And let's go ahead and take a look how we did that. So it's very, very similar to the emails. The last attachment row, we need to get the last row of attachments. And of course, we want the last results row. We're going to clear any previous email and criteria, just as we did in the emails. We're going to, in fact, this should be attachments, right? It's not email. Those are attachments. Going to clear those out and because we don't want them. And then we're going to set our criteria. Our criteria is M3. That is the email address. Same just like we did there, setting the email address as our criteria. Next up, we need to determine the last row of all of our attachments by this because we need to run that advanced filter based on on the last row. Next up, we're ready to run that advanced filter. Sheet three, that's our attachments, of course. Starting at A2, including the headers. F is the last column, the last row. Running the advanced filter, copying it. Using just M2 through M3, that is the header. That is our email address, our criteria for our email address right here. Copying it to the results, Q2 through T2. And I put unique false because I've got I've got some of the same emails you may want to put unique true but generally they're always going to be unique generally you're not going to get two of the same exact emails but for our test I just wanted a lot of emails to show so even duplicates are okay for me they may not be okay for you but normally either one should be fine because you're not likely to get duplicates all right next up we've run our advanced filter of course we want to check for the last row if there's no attachments I'm gonna skip all of that so we get the last row of our results if the last results reveal, 
row is less than three, then go to no data. So go skip all of it. We're not gonna, in cases where there's no attachments, we don't wanna, we don't wanna copy the header. We don't wanna do anything, right? We just wanna skip it all. So for these, there's no attachments. These emails have no attachments. There's nothing to put here. So, however, this one, there is data. We do want to put the attachments here. All right, so next up. So if there are attachments, then we're going to continue with sheet four. And, of course, again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring the attachment header over, and we're going to place that two above the con contact row all the way to one above. We're going to paste that the two rows above that our contact row. We're going to place the attachment header. And then we're going to center across selection all of it the entire range just like we did manually now we do it with the code and then we're going to bring over our data we can do that bringing over our data all the way from sheet 3q2 bringing that over into using the contact row in the last attachment results row minus three plus contact row so this way they're always and then of course we're going to wrap the text just like we did with the email we don't want to wrap the text and of course we want the left we want to end which is our attachment name we want to make sure to bring that to the left because we don't want so we want to horizontally put those to the left alignment right we don't want them center or right we want this on the left so it doesn't bleed over to the left all right so that is how we do that that is how we get the context and that's how we load our attachment so we run our email load we run our attachments load and that is how we are able to get the data into our email data. All right, let's focus on the picture. Now, how do we get this really cool dynamic picture of the email? But before we do that, why don't we show you how we did these conditional formatting since we're on the subject. Let's take a look at some of the conditional formats here. So when we select it, we'll see the conditional format. So let's just do just the received emails. We're going to highlight and go into home. In fact, let's pin it just for this purposes because we're going to be going to a lot. Manage the rules and take a look at it. I've got several conditional formats right here. And as you can see here, we have several conditional formats. We'll go over them one by one. The first of which is our selected row. I want to know if we've selected a row inside this email and we need to, I want to highlight that specific one. As you can see here, when we select it, I want to highlight that. And what's that going to be based on? That is going to be based on our B6 value, selected email row, B6. So I want to highlight that. So that's the first one we're going to go over. So when we select it, we can see that. Let's go back into the conditional formatting. In fact, let me just highlight the whole table, manage the rules, and we can see that we have a specific rule. There's two specific rules. I want to make sure that I4 is not empty. We want to make sure that I4, and remember, there is no constant. There is no dollar sign before 4. That's very important. I, the column, can remain absolute, but the row cannot. The row must remain dynamic because it's got to cover. However, when we're speaking of B6, which is where our row is located, of course, that can be absolute, having a dollar sign before the B and before the 6. And, of course, that's going to be row. So when both of those two conditions are met, go ahead and highlight the row. And all I've done here is just taken some dark colors here into the fill, fill effects, and I've just used two dark blues here, given the effect, and of course changed the font bold and made it white. So I have a white font selected. That's going to give us our contrast so we know what specific email has been selected. All right, so that's pretty much all we have to do for that row. Next up, let's go ahead and look at this rule. That is the underline. That's a blue underline. Let's take a look at that. Now, what I want to do is actually Let's go back for a second. I want to show you what the current, these are all hidden, but if I can if I right click and format these cells, let's take a look at the original format under the border. In fact, they are all thick borders. They're all thick borders. This is the original format. And the reason we've used thick borders for the original format is because our conditional format doesn't allow us to use thick borders. So we have to, so if we want thick borders, we must do it for the original formatting. These original formats contain thick borders, contain thick borders. However, you'll see some rows contain thin borders. All right, this one has multiple. John, you see there's that thin border in between those. So conditional formatting will give us that, can, that thin border, but it won't give us the thick border. So we need to set some rules. What are the rules to have a thin border? Well, the rules are, are they're really three rules. One, we have to have value in this cell. Two, we have to have a 
want to make sure that there's no value in the cell below, right? If there's no value in the cell below, we're going to give it a, th a thick border or keep it. So there has to be a value above, a value below, and the value in, in those three instances, below, above, current, and below, then make this line, make this line here, the, this border, the thin lower border. So that's what we've done in conditional formatting. So we go back into the conditional formatting, manage rules, and take a look at that. Let's look at the rule. The first thing, before we get back, let's look at it. This applies to I4 through L99. I4, that 4 is critical, right? Remember, I'm focused on three different. I want to know above, the current, and below. So above would be row 3. The current would be 4, and below would be 5, right? And remember, that's dynamic. So that's what, above, current, and below. So those are the three factors. So when we edit the rule, we will see three different rules using four as our current. Four is our starting point. Four is our starting point. That's what it applies to. So we have I3 does not equal empty. I4 does not equal empty. I5 does not equal empty. So in those three conditions, of course, make sure that row is dynamic and not absolute. In those three Take that border and make sure we have a border, a lower border. Everything else can stay the same. Everything else can stay the same, but that lower border must have that blue. So that is how we do it. You see, there's no option for a thick border. Now, if we wanted a different type of line, we could. Let's say we wanted it this dashed line. We can't have a thick border, but we could have it the dashed. And we could change that. And when we click OK and click Apply, you'll see now it's it's we've got that we've got that dotted border all throughout. You see, so now it's, so it just gives you an idea. So that's the border that's being changed, that's border. So we can return it, conditional formatting, manage to that solid border so you can see how that applies. We can change, we can't change to the thick border. So I've used the thick border as the original, the source border, and then the others are changed. Let's move on to the next rule, edit rule. In this particular rule, I3 equals blank, the one above equals blank, the one, the current equals blank, and the one below equals blank. So that means all three of these in blank. What do we want to do in those conditions? In those conditions, I want to remove all the borders, right? If, if the above and below, I want to remove all the borders. So when we format this, we will see no borders here. How do we get no borders? So when we clear it, we see all the borders, right? And then we just basically, we can double click on this, double click on this, double click and double click to remove those borders or just click none which is even easier just click none or the outline so when we clear it and we click none or double click to remove a specific border that clears it so i don't want any borders so that means that for for things like down here for these i don't want any borders to be displayed because there's nothing above there's nothing in the current and nothing below so that means hide all the borders all right so we've covered those two let's continue down with our rules so we've covered the first three and now let's cover this one what is this rule let's take a look at it in this case we have two conditions the one above does not equal blank and the current equals blank so again two conditions the one above the row above does not equal blank and the current equals blank where would that be instance in this case the one above does not equal blank, and the current one equals blank. Let's take a look at that again. Go through that here. The one above does not equal blank, and the current one equals blank. So what do we want to do in that condition? In that condition, I want to clear out all the borders except the one above. If we cleared out the one above, our lower row is not going to show up. Watch. You see how? It's missing. So that's what I want to do. Remember. All of our rows have that thick border. Remember that. All of them, they all have that thick border. So if I want that thick border to show up, I want to show whatever's the default border, the default border. And that default border, I want it to show up. So in that con in that specific instance here, I want that default border to show up. So how do we get that? Well, we clear that out and we just remove the left, we remove the right, we remove the bottom and we clear except we keep that top border and that is how we get the top border so we kind of go through these each one and we, that's how we get that in fact it, it's it's really the the top border or the bottom border for this so that's how we get it let's continue on with our rules and we've covered the first four and let's take a look at this one and we can edit the rule in this case i5 equals 
blank I6 does not equal blank. I5 equals blank I6. Where would that be? Where would that be? That would be our first header, right? In this case, let's close that out. I5 equal blank, the top one, and the lower one does not equal. So in that case, I want the top border to show up. So when we manage those rules here, edit those, I5 equals blank, I6 does not equal blank. In that case, I want the bottom border, the default bottom border, which is that thick border. That's how we get it. Of course, if we remove that and look at it, we're going to see now that that top border doesn't show up. You can't really see it here, but that top border is blue and it's not showing up because we just removed it. So let's manage the rules and put it right back. Format, okay, so clear it out, and then in this case, we're going to remove the left, right, and keeping that top border. Okay, so now that's how we get that top border. Now you can see the top border show up. All right, moving on. Next one, we have and I4 is equal to blank. I5 does not equal blank, and I6 does not equal blank. When would that happen? That would be this lower here. Let's go ahead and format this and see what now we have the left the right and the bottom is empty the bottom is empty when would this have well that would be right here right here i4 equals blank would be right here these here right here so in that case i want this one to show up right here so that's for this row right here we make sure you download it with the links in the description so you can walk through these yourself i might be going a little bit quick next up i want to format the top row i want to format this top header all right, next up, now we want this receive. You see this top receive header? I wanted that dark blue fade. So how do we get it there? So if we click on conditional formatting, and then we drop down to the rule that applies to that, which is this one right here. Edit, and this one is very simple. I7, the dynamic row equals received on. And in that case, I want to give it a few. I want to put a top and a bottom border on it. And I also want to, in fact, we could probably make this clear it out. We just focus on the bottom in this case. So give it that blue, that blue, and that's all we could have received on. We want the default thick border on top in that case. And the format that we're giving it to is a fill, and I'm gonna take this fill effect, and I'm gonna use this second color here and this lower color here. That is the received on. That is the received on. And now we have another one, the received on, the received emails on, which is here. And we can see that right here. This is the darker one. This one is the received email. So this is actually the top row. What do we want to do? We want to give it a little bit of darker color, the bold font, and I want to keep all the borders automatic. Why are those? Because I want those thick borders, the ones that are current, the ones that are in inherent, we want to make sure that we give it those. And of course, the fill, I'm going to give it a little bit darker, so we're going to start at the third blue down here and move to the second blue, right? Because that's our that's a little bit darker of a fade there. And then on the font, I want to give it a bold and then dark blue color. So that is how we do it. That is how we give it all of the conditional formats. Those are the all ones. And it's pretty much exactly the same for the attachments too, the same types of rules. So we won't go over them because we've already gone way over time and I've got still more to show you, but that is how we do it. Now let's take a look. How do we get this very cool dynamic picture pop up? All right, awesome. Now the picture tool is a great tool in Excel. And if you don't know how to use the picture tool, I'm going to show you that right now. We have a camera, the ability to have a camera. It's this tool right here. If you want to find the camera tool, you can of course go into your more commands click on the all commands and you would search for the camera down here so you'll find that camera tool right here you can add it to course to your quick access toolbar just clicking add i've already used it and basically the idea of a camera tool is if you have a specific number of cells let's say i wanted to take a picture of these cells right here i would just highlight those cells and then click in the picture and then it's going to and then you hit enter and that's going to create a picture of those cells and that picture is going to be dynamic if you haven't used the tool it's an amazing tool so then whatever we change in our original rules will automatically change in our new picture you'll see how it changes there automatically so that is the same principle that i'm going to use for the emails in fact the emails what i've done is i've created a range here you'll see this this specific range now we can take this up this specific range is dynamic based on the current email selected so for example let's in fact let me select on a specific email here i that's a little bug you see that that's a bug we shouldn't i need to put in a, a 
catch, we shouldn't be able to select on this and have anything show up. That doesn't make sense, right? So we need to, I'll put in the code. If the active cell equals, you know, above the active row, then don't show this. We only want it to show when we select an email. So that's just a little bit of bug. I'll fix that. But I want to make sure that when a user selects this, nothing should show up. So we'll, I'll fix that. But that you can see. So it's an easy. What I'll do is I'll just say, if the active cell row is above this 17, then do nothing. In fact, we can write that right now. Why don't we do that? The individual basic, let's go into our contacts here and we have let's go ahead and see how we're doing that now the user is selecting the user is selecting specific cells what are they selecting anything from i anything from i over to l and we're focused on that i through l so that's what we're going to focus on so let's take a look at that into contacts i through l i through l here Right? I don't want to load the picture if our target row, B8, is greater than that. So B6 equals the target row, right? B6. But what if it's bigger, higher than our emails? So only, let's put in, what I don't want to do is this. If our target row, our, our row is 11 here, right? Our selected row is 11. I, if they select anything more than a, less than 11, so if their target, if their row is 9 or 10, we don't want anything to happen. We only want to make sure that it's at least 11 or lower. So we can put an if then using B3, B3 or our contact row in this case. So let's take a look and write that in there. So we want to say and target row is greater than what then b3 range b let's move that over so you can see it three dot value then okay so we want to make sure that our target row is greater than that well it should be actually greater than or equal to greater than or equal to so that's going to cover us all right so now when we select on the headlines nothing is going to happen however when we select a specific email our pop-up is going to display now how did we get that pop-up to display to include those emails well actually we used a specific range that i've set aside here and this particular range can include all of our email details and of course the contents of that range are going to be dynamic so we don't need to touch that the first thing i did of course was highlight those cells all of the cells here and then I took a picture of it using our camera tool so that created a specific picture and then what I did is I named that picture once it was created I just gave it a name but before giving it a name I wanted to add the ability to close it so I did as I added this little icon picture right here this little close icon I added that I so I created an icon and put a border on it just a little icon picture and then what I did is I grouped both the picture and the icon together and I created a group so I've grouped them using our grouping tool here and of course our grouping tool is also located in the format here under group so we can group that once they are grouped I've given it a name and of course that name you can see here is the email picture group it is this name that we're going to use that places our picture but now how did we get the contents of this group of this particular picture to be dynamic well once we take a picture of a particular range the contents of those range when that changes the picture updated that's one of the magical things in excel automatically it will update so here if we look over to the right to our original the location of our original cells we will see that the received on is dynamic and we use the indirect the indirect formula to get that so for example if we want the received on date now we know that the received on date in this email is going to be located in column i right we've got our received on so i want this value here so we know the column column i we don't know the row but we do know the row actually that row is going to be located in B6 that is our selected email row so now that we know the column and we know the row we can use indirect to obtain that value using indirect here indirect I we know the column and B6 is value then the next of course a1 is true we're going to use a1 style not r1 c1 a1 and so that is the same thing and of course the from is a little bit different because we don't list the from 
The from, we also use direct, but the from is located in our main table. In fact, the from email address is located in column E, and the from name is located in column D, right? But what about, but what about the row? Well, the row is located in B3. In this case, it's B3. That is our selected. So we have information. We have information based on the customer or the contact in this case, both the name and both the email address, and of course, the category located in D, E, and F, and of course, our row number being in B3. Three. Whereas in our email details, we have received on the subject and the message. Those are located in columns I, J, and K with the row number also, in this case, 11. So using that data, we can create a dynamic range based on that. So for example, the from email is in column E and B3, while the category is column E. F and B3 using indirect. Now the from name, of course, in D and B3, and then the subject is part of the email. So that is going to be, in fact, let me update that, equals indirect, indirect. And where is that, what is that subject? Well, that subject is located right here in column J, and of course, column J along with B6 value, B6 value. So let's go ahead and update that, indirect, column J, and then we have and B6. So let's go ahead and select B6, B6, there we go. And then of course true as we want A1 style. All right, so that's how we've got that. Now we've got that available, great. So now we've got our dynamic, we've got our dynamic message, our dynamic subject. We have our indirect using from name, so we have everything set. So as we change this, as we change this, now it changes automatically. So when we select something with a lot of emails, based on that, our picture is going to pop up and we're going to be able to display it automatically. So now how do we get it to display? Well, basically it's very easy. We want to just simply use the VBA code to display this, to show the picture as we've had it, and we want to display it one row below the active cell row, and we want to display it in column I. So we're going to use column I and our email row, but one below that. And we use VBA. So basically, when we select anything from I in I through L, we want something to happen. So let's go ahead and visit the code and take a look at exactly what it is that it's happening. Back into the VBA code, and we see just, we saw this earlier, I and the target row, so now we see B6, and we're going to email picture load. We're going to run that email picture load when those things happen, when we select I8 through L99. And of course, the target row has to be nothing, right? It can't be nothing. There must be something in column I. And of course, we discussed the uh, target range greater than B3. It's got to be greater than because we don't want to selecting on those headers won't be help. So it's got to be there. All right, so we're just going to B6 is going to be a target row. This, of course, is used for our conditional formatting, putting the B6 our target row. And then we're going to run this macro, macro email picture load. So let's take a look at that macro in the contacts load here. And we'll take a look at the email picture. It's a very simple macro. We're going to determine the selected row, dimension that as long selected row. And of course, with sheet four is we're going to focus. The first of all, we want to set that active cell row as our selected row. And then with the shapes email picture group, that's the group I just showed you with the picture and that small x, those are together. We've created a group and named that email picture group. First of all, we want to make it visible using visible equals MSOC true. And then I want to position it. Once it's visible, I want to position it. Where do I want to? Of course, column I, we just discussed that. We know we want it in column I, but what is the row? Of course, it's going to be that selected row, but not right on the row. We want it one below the row. So plus one is going to add row one below. We're going to position that to the left. And of course, the same with the top. And of course, we've also, if you remember that small x, we've assigned a macro to that. And we want to use that to hide it. So I've assigned the macro of email picture high to that. And that's going to give us sheet four shapes, email picture visible equals false. So that's just a one line of code, and that's going to hide it. Therefore, when we click that x, it's going to hide that picture.
and we'll reduce the size so you can see how it looks and it, it shows up our email contents and it's really really great it uses it it works very well all right so that is how we get the dynamic pop-up email picture and just so i show you if we right click and we click inside this x we see the macro that's been assigned we click assign macro and of course we'll see that the macro email picture hide has been assigned email picture hide has been assigned to that so that's a, a great great feature i think you're going to use it in fact you can use this type of feature for really any type of data especially when it's dynamic when you have a small area and you want to show a lot of data the pop-up picture or dynamic content data picture works great in this type of scenario and many others all right, the next feature I'd love to show you is the ability to sort by name, which is a great feature where we can click on a header and sort either ascending or descending simply by clicking on the header row. And I'd love to show you how we're doing it. It's not a very difficult macro. It's very streamlined and it works really great. And let's go ahead and go into that. Of course, we're gonna be focused on selection change. Selection change is the first thing when the user selects it. And that's gonna be D7 through G7. So when a user selects that, we want something to happen. So let's go into the developers mode. And of course, we're gonna focus on the contacts sheet and we're gonna scroll down to selection change. And we're gonna look right here in the on selection change of header, sort by header. So this macro here, this is gonna run on selection change. If not intersect target range D7 through G7 is nothing, then run this macro content contacts sort by name and if we look into the contacts miscellaneous here we're going to see the contacts sort by name this macro i'm going to run you through this macro and see just how it works all right the first thing we want to do is we want to dimension a few details like the active column is long it's going to be a whole number the last customer row if we're going to be sorting and we certainly need to know the last row so we'll go ahead and sort that the header column i need to know what column the user has selected that's very important so whether it's going to be called four five six or seven i need to know that we'll use that in the future and next up of course we need to know the active header we need to determine the string the the string there because we're going to add in a specific type of icon whether it's an up triangle or down triangle so we need to add that to the current text and of course we need to set the sort type because the reason i need to know it the sort type is if it's currently i need to know it's current if it's currently descending then when i click on it i need to make it ascending and if, if it's currently ascending i need to make it descending so we need to set the sort type and we also need to know what the current sort type is based on this specific triangle icon that's going to tell us if there is any current sorting on the column as well all right moving along so the first thing we want to do is stop the calculations of course that's going to stop uh, in our macro here that's going to stop our calculations enabling events calculation and screen updating to false and manual in calculation that's going to make it a lot faster to run our macro and of course at the end we're going to reset the calculation before that macro completes we want to determine the active header the active header equals the active cell value that's a string value determining the active header value that's important because we need to know what the value is and if it contains any type of a triangle so we know whether to send it ascending or descending and of course we need to know the last customer row we're going to use column d for that 99 and x up that's getting us the last row we need that for sorting we want to sort we want to clear any sort fields that we currently have on the table so that's going to be very important first thing you want to do is sort the next thing i need to know is if for example there is some type of a sort on the current column then we need to reverse the sort but first we need to determine if and that's how we check for a specific character this character and h25 b2 that is the up pointing triangle so if the current active header contains this using in string if this active header contains this up triangle then set the sort type to descending right if it's that means it's currently ascending using the up triangle we need to set it to descending likewise this is the down triangle this character is the down triangle. so if that means if the current header contains a down triangle then we need to set the sort type to ascending opposite that way we know which way to sort it moving forward in the macro Next up, what I want to do is I want after I've determined if it's going to be ascending or descending, what I want to do is I want to clear any and all triangles that might be 
in the header. And to do that, to clear it all out, we can go one by one and remove the triangles, but it would be much easier if we had a backup header range that we could just replace with this. And I do actually right over here. So if we take a look at this specific range of cells, AA3 through AD3, that's going to be going to call our customer header, custom header. So all I need to do is really take that header and paste the values or go value to value and bring it in here. And that's going to remove any and all triangles that are in here. And that's really important because we're really resetting the sort. And based on the current sort, we're going to sort either ascending or descending. So we need to replace that. That's going to get rid of any triangles that are already in the header. Okay, moving along in our code, once we have that, we're ready to run the sort. But first of all, if the sort type is descending, if the current sort type is descending, then what? Then we're going to sort the sort fields, add a key, right? We're adding the key on row seven in the active cell column. That the column is going to be the key, so that's important. We're going to sort on descending. I want to sort them descending in this case. And then in that case, the active cell value equals the active cell value and add in the descending, the down pointing triangle. Add in this triangle right here. So it's whatever the current value is, and then we're going to add the down triangle. However, if it's not, we're going to run the ascending. If it, the other sort, the other option is ascending. In that case, we're going to use the same information except this time we're going to sort by ascending, ascending. And in this case, we're going to put in the up pointing triangle, which is this character right here, this character right here. That character value is the upward pointing triangle. We're going to add that to whatever the current value is. That's going to give us error. And that's pretty much it. That's very much it. So then all we need to do is set the sort range and apply our sort. Of course, it's going to start out at 8, which is run below, and G is the last column and then the last row we're going to set that that's our range and we're going to apply the sort that's it we're going to clear any row we're going to clear any selected row and we're going to just unselect the range we're going to select e3 so it unselects the range that is how we create this automated very amazing and very easy sort by single click on any column header ascending or descending so great, I'm really glad I got to show you that. And next up, we have the last thing we have a search by name. And this is the ability to, this is going to work when you have a lot of names. It's going to scroll to automatically the row. So if we've sorted by name and we want to search by name, we want to locate, all we would need to do is put in this, put in the first few letters, or put, and it's going to tell us go automatically to that row automatically. And of course, when we have a lot, it's going to be very, very amazing. There's one little bug I'm going to work out so that we don't automatically do that. So if we put in Randy Austin, automatically it's going to sort to that row, which is really amazing. So if we have a lot of contacts, it's a quick way. And how do we do that? Well, we use match. And this is, we're going to use this one right here, B5. What we use is we use match. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use several match formulas, whether it's an exact match this way, when we're just, even when we're typing our A, we want it to go to the right value. We also want it to go. That's not an exact match but it's still going to get us to the right and we use match and we use several different matches this match is for an exact match if there's an exact match put in the row plus if it's not an exact match right if it's one above put in eight and if it's one below a partial match if these are partial matches, put in so all this basically does is is going to take our match and find the row where the closest match is. Find the row where the closest match is. So that is really powerful. And then, of course, how do we run this? How do we get it? Well, we use an automatic scroll. It's a very, very simple macro. Let's take a look in back in our code and we go into the contact. And we'll see here on change here, all we're going to be doing is going to active window scroll and what are we scrolling to whatever's in b5 b5 is what we're going to scroll and that's all and then we're going to else if there's no we're going to active put that search name in why do we do that if it if it doesn't equal empty we're going to scroll the window to whatever row is in b5 in this case it's 16 we're going to scroll it but what if the user deletes it in that case i want to put search name and i want to so if we're scrolled here if we're all the way up and the user puts and the user deletes it i want to scroll all the way back to the top row eight and i want to put in the word search name here so how do we do that well if the target value does not equal empty do this but what if it's empty then do this 
target value equals the search name, active window scroll to eight. So that's all it is. And this was just gonna help us get to the next cell. There's a little bit of an issue if we go on enter. The reason is when we do enter here, we don't want it to, we don't want it to go to the lower end. So I'll, I'll fix that so it doesn't actually go and automatically scroll. So we'll just, I'll show you that in just a moment. And so that is all we have to do. So that is how we get the scroll. That is how we automatically scroll. When you have a lot of contacts, it's a great way to find what you're looking for, even if you don't have an exact match. All right, we covered a lot in this extended training. Let's go over what we covered. We covered extended. Oh, we didn't cover this the slide out menu let's do that real quick a slide out menu i can't forget i got so many features here these particular option groups are basically connected to if we click on format control we'll see b13 so these four specific are control are here the file attachments here and so the false true those are automatic so as we change it here we change them here. So they, that's how they connected based on the cell value. And we can use these cell values to determine what types of attachments we want imported from Outlook. All right, and how do we get this really cool slide out feature? All right, how do we do that? Well, let me show you how. Back into the code we go, and we have here under into email attachment miscellaneous and we scroll down and we see two very simple macros and what i want to do is this files type group this is the group that covers all of it if you want it faster or slower we can make it faster or slower or step through it so if we wanted to make it a little bit slower what i'm going to do is i'm going to run just a basic four next loop we're going to do a little bit of a tiny little weight and we're going to set the height to be dynamic as the group height so that group height is going to go from one to 165 and as we change the step through we can make it slower or faster so if we use a small step like step five both of these, whether it's reversed, it's going to make it faster or slower. So in this case, it's going to be a little bit slower. And if we want to make it faster, we include it higher than 20. So in that case, if we want to make it faster, we may make this, let's say, 45. That's going to be very, very fast. So it really depends. You can change the speed, and it's a very, very cool feature. So if you want a little bit of, bit of a pop-up, so now it's going to be very, very fast. There we go. It's not large fast but if you'll see we can set it back to maybe something like 15 which is a nice smooth this gives us a nice smooth you can also change the the weight now as well if you want it very very fast i don't even think if you comment out that weight now it's going to be super fast you may not even be able to see how fast it is there we go so you see even if you don't want it it's going to be really really fast so that gives you an idea of what you can do with it in fact let's go ahead and put this to step five or let's say three maybe we'll be able to see a, a slight it might be a smoother experience and it gives you a, a good idea of how you can play with it to get just the just the kind you want that's kind of a nice good look all right so we have that and we know how to set the file types and basically when the emails come in we just need to determine whether the attachments so when the attachments come in we can determine if we want them based on those true or false that's pretty much it so this gives us the control to be able to have specific emails come in or email attachment types come in or not so generally you may not want pictures but we'll all set a default for all for now all right that is it we've covered that so we've covered the attachment type we've covered the contact sheet we've covered the default category columns header sort Search and jump to that was a really cool feature the dynamic workbook location dynamic picture pop-up we can just conditional formatting So we have covered so much in this amazing training of the final part of the email manager I hope you've enjoyed it. Of course I do appreciate your comments your shares your likes your feedback is amazing if you do get a chance Please check out the dashboard course and of course make sure you've always subscribed to our youtube channel where you'll get alerts each and every week we do these amazing videos thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.